Hey everybody, uh, this is Xenogears. Um, I've wanted to LP this game for a long time, but for for the purposes of a regular LP, this is kind of poison because it's an 80 hour game. Um, this is my favorite RPG ever. Uh, it came out on the PlayStation. Um, it's got the most epic, ridiculous RPG story in existence. Um, but unfortunately, it kind of falls apart in the uh, in the third, the last third of the game, um, and it's because it runs out of money, or the the company that made it ran out of money. So, oh no, I don't want that to happen. No, 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 no. God damn it! So this is going to be kind of a different LP from uh, what you guys are are used to. Um, in this LP, what I'm going to be doing is uh, since it's such a long form LP, I'm going to release big chunks of it, like an hour at a time, maybe more. And it keeps going to the damn, the damn title thing screen. It's like I got to keep pressing it. Um, here, I'll talk over the initial cutscene for just a little bit. So yeah, uh, but I'm going to, I'm going to do just a little bit of it at a time or release it in big chunks. Um, and this isn't going to be one of those LPs where I'm constantly running my mouth. Um, just kind of, I've seen so little gameplay of this game out in the world, so I figured why not do it? Why not do it in some form and then just have it out there for anybody who wants to see it? Um, so hopefully you guys enjoy it. Um, here, I'm going to shut my mouth and enjoy this opening cutscene here. Someone's compensating for something. This is an emergency. Level one only. Omega one restarting. Alpha one genome restructuring. Confirming exon replacement. Base code 85 million. 100 million. Its speed is overwhelming. Alpha one to raise your central. Access confirmed. Initializing fake net. Disconnected. Activating emergency shelter. Denied. Contamination is spreading widely. Captain! Cut off the cables manually. Roger. Activating self-destruct bolts. Confirming. No good, nothing happened. This opening is really cool. Um, we can't stop them. 98% of our weapons have been taken over. And it's... I don't want to say it doesn't relate to the entire game until the last, like, fifth or last third. Uh, because once you understand what's going on here, you'll understand a lot more about the game. Uh, so at some point I will refer back and be like, hey, watch the watch the first five minutes of, uh, of the first episode if you want to remember what was going on. The music in this is amazing. This music was uh, Yasunori Mitsuda, fresh off of uh, Chrono Trigger, which uh, some people consider to be the best uh, JRPG of all time. See that all civilians and passengers are safely and, transported um, to the this game is kind of a spiritual successor. After evacuation is complete. I am evacuating the ship. All of you, evacuate now. Like I'm gonna show in the beginning, but uh, Luca, uh, the scientist character from Chrono Trigger, she is she will give you a tutorial in the beginning of the game, which apparently people went nuts over. Remember those weapon systems, because we're gonna run into one later. It's uh, just to give you an idea of the scale of this thing. <laughs>
The fact that he self-destructs there is baffling. Um, because you learn much, much, much later, so it's not really that much of a spoiler, that that ship had the very last of the human race on it. So what, why the fuck would you do that? Time to naked girl in Japanese video game, like, what are we like, less than 10 minutes in? <laughs> Shit. Whoops. Whoops again. Sorry about that. We may have a few uh, short stopping issues like that in the game. So here's the real intro to the game. The music is so fucking good. Absolutely amazing. Can't decide if I want to just read these or if I want to... Uh, just kind of summate them. Um... You know, screw it, I'll read it. The continent of Ignis in the northern hemisphere of our world, on this, the largest continent, a war has been raging between two countries for hundreds of years, 500 years. In the north of the continent lies the Kislev Empire, if my uh, pronunciation of that is wrong, I'm sorry. In the south lies the de desert kingdom of Aveh. The war has gone on for so long that the people have forgotten the cause, knowing only the pointless circle of hostility and tragedy. The chronic war obsession was soon to encounter a devastating change. This was due to the ethos, an institution that preserves our world's culture, repairing tools and weapons excavated from the ruins of an ancient civilization. At once, both countries excavated these ruins and had the ethos repair their discoveries in order to increase their military power. The various weapons excavated from the ruins greatly changed the form of warfare. The outcome of the battles between the two countries was no longer determined by man-to-man -man combat, but by gears, giant humanoid fighting machines, mecha, <laughs> which is great, that were obtained from deep within the ruins. Eventually, after continuous swings in the state of the war, Kislev Gret gained the upper hand. The major factor behind this lay in the enormous difference in the amount of resources buried within the ruins. But suddenly, a mysterious military force appeared in the continent of Ignas. Called Gebler, this force decided to make contact with Ave. They're kind of space Nazis, you'll learn that later. With the assistance of this Gebler military force, Ave was able to recover from being hopelessly outnumbered to being back on an even standing with Kislev. Then, taking further advantage of its newly gained momentum, Ave started to capture one territory after another from Kislev, showing no indication of slowing down in their invasion campaign. The remote village of Lahan, on the outskirts of Ave, near the border with Kislev, This is where it all begins. I'm not going to read every single subtitle in this game. Just the... I thought the opening would be appropriate to read. One of the uh, few game that used both in-game sprites and 3D models, and I think it, I think the sprites still hold up pretty well. To get the point across.
Yeah, that sprite still looks really good. For a game that's almost 20 years old? Came out in 98? Yeah, almost 20 years old. I'll explain more once we get into the game, but the combat system in this game is an absolute blast. This is a really cool transition. I really like this. The name of this track is Our Village is Number One. So I hope you guys are ready for about an hour of messing around in a village. So this game uses 2D sprites with 3D movement in the real world. You've got a running mechanic, you've got a jumping mechanic, so you've got light platforming. Um, it's a really cool... Uh, it's a really cool uh, design mechanic. Nah, I don't want to rest. I just wanted to grab stuff. So let's see, I think I can look at some of these. I'm such a fucking nerd. I would not mind having art of that <clears throat> hanging in my house. Just because I'm a Xenogears nerd. Like I said, this is my favorite fucking game. Uh, favorite old RPG anyways. Yeah, I'm getting stuff. <laughs> Just giving you all sorts of stuff right now. Oh, what's the sign say? Doesn't say anything, darn. Here, we're going to talk to her because she gives you a little backstory into our main character here by the name of Faye. Hopefully I'm not cutting through those text boxes too fast. Um, if I am, please let me know in the comments. That way I can uh, either make it last longer or actually read it out or whatever you guys want. Because I'm just having so much fun like enjoying the actual game. <clears throat> but I want you guys to be able to enjoy it too. Especially since even though if you have like a like a PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 3, you can get it on their store. But other than that, this game's kind of difficult to find. Alright, so we've done everything we can do downstairs right now. Let's go upstairs. Look at these guys. There's a wedding happening! What is this, the day before his wedding and he's just like... The past. I guess when I was about to get married I was in a position where I had nothing but time to process it, so... So, a really interesting introduction to the character so far. We've seen him in a vision fighting in a giant mecha, but now that we talk to him, we learn he's just, you know, basic RPG protagonist with the uh, amnesia and everything. 
Uh, he's 18 in this game, so when he was brought to this village, he was 15. So it seems like three years of a pretty happy existence so far, right? Then again, we're getting like, <laughs> we're getting the we're going to be friends forever talk right away. That's not good. So just, like, I'm going to talk to a lot of people, because in a JRPG, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to talk to everybody. I'm not going to talk to everybody, though. Just because this is already going to be, like, a 60-hour LP. <laughs> um, and I don't want it to become a 90-hour LP. Why don't you try and get laid yourself? You're at that age, kid. <laughs> Jeez. <coughs> Jesus, excuse me. Oh, God. Talk about being young and banging all the chicks in the village. Oh. Look at this kid's huge head. <laughs> Spoiled little brat. I think for the most part the translation that was done from the Japanese to English was pretty damn good in this game. Um, there's a lot of puns in this game later on, and the fact that the puns translated somehow is really good. But I like how I like how the the, the text style and the speech style for all the characters are kind of endearing. Really brings personality to uh, to the characters, I think. <laughs> oh, I'm having so much fun. So here we are out in the village of Lahan. Let's talk to some people. <laughs> Let's talk to her. People keep giving us, well, we keep getting Aquasol, which is the healing item. Cow! We're gonna have some more fun here. Phew. 
<laughs> so as I jump in this well, we keep getting uh, prodded towards meeting Alice. And then I keep jumping down this well. Who's ready for puns? <laughs> well done. God damn it. We got an eyeball, I think it was. You can't tell I know the vast majority of this game's secrets because I've probably put a thousand hours into this game over the course of my life. God damn it. That's a really good item. It's, it's the mid-range healing item, but I mean, we're 20 minutes into the game and I have one already, so, you know, emergency potion basically. <laughs> well, well, well. God damn it. So already we've got combat items. And I'll explain the combat later, but at this point I'm just gonna equip that. Get the straight up damage items. Alright, you ready for this? <laughs> Jumping on his little picnic. Let's talk to him. Is he going to be pissed off? No, he's just asleep. Wait. So you're so you were asleep, but you could still yell at me for jumping on the food? Bastard. <laughs> All right. So first thing I'm going to do actually, where is the villet? <laughs> So I accidentally knocked into her and she's super angry at me. I love little touches like that in this game. This game has a ton of them. So I'm going to go in here, and this is kind of the tutorial house, but I'm going in here specifically to talk to Luca. <laughs> she's not a character in this game. She only shows up for the tutorial, which is super cool. Yeah, here. Let's deal with Luca from Chrono Trigger. <laughs> You're pretty smart for an artist. She's all grown up in this game. Oh, look at it! <laughs> Looked like that thing in the opening cutscene. So that wasn't me cutting it off, that was the game making a joke about the way she talks. Which is super cool. It's funny. game already has more personality to it than, like, <laughs> so many of the other games uh, that come out in the past, just recently. And it feels effortless. I feel like games that have come out recently that, I, I guess I'd say kind of try for their own personality, but it's just, it doesn't work. Like, I've recently played uh, Sunset Overdrive, and that game tries so hard. <laughs> it was the video game version of a try-hard. Even a two-year-old. Charging me money? Ah! It's like extortion, man. Alright, so let's uh, really quick save here. Come on, there we go. I'm just hoping it works. I've had issues with this version not saving properly, and I've had to come up with alternatives. But it looks like it's there, so... 
hopefully. All right, so I'm not going to run through any other tutorials, uh, just because, I mean, that's really not that interesting in the grand scheme of things. Let's see, there's the village house, there's the general store, there's the bar, there's Dan. Drunks welcome. They make a lot of fun of drunks in this game, too. <laughs> I came in here for two reasons. One is to get proposition for sex. <laughs> it's not a joke. She wants the D. <laughs> and the other one is to talk to this drunk over here in the corner. It's interesting what types of items they decide to always have a 3D model of and what types of items, like the walls and stuff. Like, become see-through when you rotate the world. Because, like, look at that wall right behind the bar. There, it's gone now, so you can still see. But the 3D object, the, uh, the bookcase is still there. So I think that's a bookcase. Now, that looks like they got drinks or, or sitting on it. Uh-oh. Hang on. Oops. Sorry about that. I can have a few weird stops like that. I think I'll edit them out. Or I'll attempt to edit them out. So this is... This is a perfect example of, in a JRPG, talk to every single person you meet. Uh, this item that I was just given... Um, here, I wonder if we can look at a description. Uh, mermaid tear. It shines like a jewel. This will, uh, become important by 30, 40 hours later. <laughs> we got the eyeball, spider webs. Uh, spider web you can use for a thing, but, like, the eyeball. You get, the main way you get, um, uh, money, which I think is just called G. Hang on. Let me see. Yep, G. Gold, G, whatever. I'm gonna call it G. The main way you get G in this game is, um, in the early game anyway, is by fighting enemies and then selling the body parts you get off of them. It's kind of, kind of morbid, right? But, you know, makes more sense than, you know, just, like, beating the shit out of a wolf out in the world and then it, like, dropping money out of its asshole. I don't know. So here we are talking to Dan, who apparently has ulterior motives. So we've got kind of a weird, uh... <laughs> weird romance triangle thing going on here. And then this kid's like, hey, you should, uh, you should like my sister. She's got big tits. <laughs> should I agree with him or no? It actually won't change the story. It'll just kind of change the conversation a little bit. Dan, you're so weird, Dan. Damn it, Dan. Alright. Uh, let's see. There's one more thing I want to do. Where's the elder's house? Here it is. Go up the back here. You know what? I'm going to talk to a few more people, because there's so much personality to this damn place. It's an excellent feeling. I agree. That's why I do my dumb, goofy, millennial-ass urban gardening shit. I 
think you give me something after that. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> he put cow shit in it. I'm gonna drink cow shit at some point, I bet. Okay, here's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go up here and talk to this kid. That's so pretty! I know it's just a, a sprite, but... It still looks... Oh, I love this fucking game. Okay, let's go talk to Alice. This game has so much personality. I, fuck, I fucking love it. I hope you guys enjoy this LP. Even if you just put it on in the background, come and look at it at some point and go, Oh, hey, that looks cool. They made spiritual sequels to this game, I guess, uh, in the Xenosaga series, but even that was cut down from its original, like, six-game projection. Um, yeah. And even that, like, uh, Xenogears, if you, if you kind of look into the game itself, uh, outside of the actual game... In terms of story, this is actually supposed to be part five of, like, this ridiculous epic story that spans, like, tens of thousands of years. Um, but we never got that. And for a huge fan like me, that's super disappointing. Because Xeno or Xenosaga was supposed to be, like, the beginning story, and it kind of was, but then it went off on its own thing. Once they realized they weren't going to get the support or money that they needed. And, I mean, Xenosaga has tremendous pacing issues. and It's a fun game, but the story gets so convoluted by halfway through the first one. Not to mention through the second and third one that it's just... I'm kind of glad it ended, but... Like, it's a far cry from this game. This game is fantastic. So here's our childhood friend well, for the past three years, Alice. And her beautiful wedding dress. So you can already tell this whole marriage thing has kind of made everything awkward between everybody. At least between Faye and Alice. This is nice. <laughs> so we're gonna go get some camera equipment from the good doctor. Eat some good cooking.
clearly a lot of things being left unsaid between these two. Let's see, do you have anything new to say? Yep. So we've got this really nice little town. People are kind of caught up in the rut of life here in the town. But that's okay. At least it seems like some people wish they could do more with their lives and go out into the wild world, wide world, which makes sense. If you spend your entire life in a small village, I can assume that would be the case. Aw, she's so cute. Should we be nice? Yeah, why not? Ah, We've pledged our heart away to a, a young little girl. Very cute. Speaking of little kids... <laughs> this kid's running the only general store in town. And we're going here to stock up on a few items, because we're about to go out into the world. Stamina, drink of courage and love. We all know exactly what they're talking about, but the fact that it's coming out of the mouth of a kid is kind of adorable. Alright, let's buy... Just enough. Uh, we don't need that. Omega Sol's really good. There we go. Screw it. Spend all our money. We don't need anything else. Though I should have sold that eyeball. Oh well. I'm not too worried about it. Alright, so let's go north up to the mountain pass here. So here we are at the mountain pass. Um, and I actually kind of wanted to talk about this. Um... Because obviously the world's broken up into, you know, town moments and, and uh, a world map and exploring dungeons and stuff like that. And um, I'm going to be doing a lot of grinding just to make the, uh, the, the dungeon sections. And, oh, the dungeon sections and the world map go a little smoother, I guess is the right word. Um, I will not be showing the grinding uh, because it's just going to be me doing a bunch of the same combat crap over and over and over and over. Uh, there's actually a lot to do on this path, so I'm going to be running around. And here we go to the combat. Well, the hand-to-hand -hand combat, anyways. Um, okay, so here's your, here's, your, here's your combat system, and it's one of the better combat systems, I think, from the, the like, square... Um, What's it called? Their, their Golden Age in the late 90s of their RPGs. You've got your attack, your regular attack. You've got your uh, your magic attack. You've got defense. You've got items. But if you move it, you've also got combos, um, escape, and then the thing that was uh, whoop, blanked out at the top is called gear, which means that we'll be getting mecha later. But the basic combat system is based on a combo system where triangle, square, and X are used to do combos. It's your light, medium, and hard attack. And then you have combo points, which you can see at the bottom left corner of the screen. Um, so in your regular attack, you'll actually do combos, which is pretty cool. Um, and you learn, um, you learn skills called death blows later on. Which is where you take your combos um, and you gain a special skill from it. Which is really cool. It's a really cool mechanic. Um, so the lion's share of combat is actually done with these combos and death blows. At least the, uh, the on foot uh, combat anyways. Let's explore around here for a little while and then head up to the Doc's house. Hey, look! There's our first jumping puzzle. And they actually show us the way. 
So you have to jump over that shit, go across a rickety bridge, and climb a mountain filled with, like, dangerous animals and stuff just to see the doctor. Just to give you an idea how small of a town we're talking about. Oh! Got attacked in the tree. Probably should have taken out the wolf first, because the wolf can do more damage than the hobgoblins, unless they do, uh... Unless they do their special attack, which is where they absorb hit points from you. Um... Oh, shit. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Jeez. Sorry about that. So an interesting thing to note about the hobgoblins, um, I always thought that thing on the back left of them was their head, and for some reason the sprite was always facing away from us, but that's almost like a man bun or a ponytail. That big circle part at the bottom, that's actually the body, and then the, the little bottom part, the little roots or tentacles or whatever it is, is its legs. So I spent so much of my life just like, why does it look so weird like, eh, whatever, just beat him up. <laughs> So you gain levels as in regular uh, uh, regular RPGs, um, and received Acrosol, cool. Except for, um, oh, I do want to go over that way, that's right. Except for actual um, level progression and stat progression, uh, the only thing that leveling up does for your character is allows you to use more advanced death blows. Bam, bam, bam. Relight attacks. Um, but they don't give you... You don't have... Like, there's no guide. There's no, hey, you hit level 20, now you can use these death blows. Um, the only real indication is that you start getting more combo points to use over time, so you can start to do more... Uh... Found a bird nest. Of course I'm going to take the egg. We're about to have some trouble here. <laughs> Getting attacked by a chicken! Oh my god! Oh, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> Silly me. Um, but yeah, there's no real indication that it's like, hey, you've done progression at this point. Um, in the combat, in the combat system. So, the first time I played through this game. I was, like, at the end of the game, and I'd only unlocked, like, a third of the combos. No way, never. And then she'll start knocking hit points off of me. Uh, where was I going this way? There's something to grab over here, if I remember correctly. Or not. It's just another way to go to the damn jump. Oh, here. There's one more tutorial for you guys. It's easy, watch me. Let's see. There we go. <clears throat> Alright, so time to use an item, because let's see, we don't have a healing spell yet. I guess I can show off the... Uh... I guess I can show off some of the mana attacks. Uh, you do have a mana bar, it's not shown because it's such a minor, um, uh, minor part of the combat system in this game. Sit down, why not? Bam! So already with a pretty powerful, uh, mana attack. Get my ass handed to me by this evil twin-tailed devil wolf. Uh, at the bottom right, you can see you have the EP, which is the mana in this game. It refers to ether points. Because <clears throat> all magic in this game is referred to as um, uh, ethers. Um, and the magic is actually tied into the technology. And you learn that a little later uh, in the actual story. <sighs> mm, excuse me. this bridge. Never! 
The reason I'm being a jerk to this chicken is because you get, um, you get something for the egg later. So, I'm being a dick to animals, but it's on purpose. Hi, kitty. Good kitty. Wow. So if you notice at the beginning here, I mean, you've got a lot of combat options, but they're kind of limited, and it really, the game really opens up once you get further into it. It becomes incredibly complex, and I really like that, I really like that that's the case. Alright, is this the tree? Yep, I can catch that spider. I gotta get it! Yeah, I caught a spider! Look at that in the item menu. And then I'll show you guys one more thing. It wiggles and squiggles. If I remember correctly, I can also give that to someone later. Uh, while we're in the menu here, I'll show you the um, the skills, the death blows thing here. Uh, this is where it would show your progress towards the next death blow. Um, but it doesn't tell you the button combination to do it. Um, and it shows you the death blows you already have. So it's basically, it's basically you, becomes your move list later on in the game. No way, never. All right, so let's drop down here. Grab this, and then head up to the dock's house. Oh, and I'm stuck. Let's see if I can one-hit that guy. Yeah, looks like it. Amazing. So the light, medium, and heavy attacks, normally you would think you would always want to do heavy attacks just because it does more damage, um, but there is a uh, hit percentage system. So basically the heavier your attack, the less likely it is to hit. So it's kind of like a like a, a risk reward type of deal, which is pretty cool. Uh, never. It's my egg. It's my house. Alright, let's see. What does the sign say? Gosh darn it! Still a chicken! We won't have to... There we go. It just says up to uh, Dr. Satan Uzuki's house. And we'll never be bothered by that chicken again. It gave up. I recently saw a time-lapse video on Facebook. Somebody put their GoPro up in a tree next to a bird's nest. And the bird was sitting in the tree in the nest and hanging out. And then the bird goes off for some reason. And then it's just nothing for a little while. And then this big ass rat snake comes out of nowhere just climbs up the tree into the nest and eats all the eggs and leaves which is I wouldn't say funny but come on there we go oh wait before I even do that I want to do one other thing I also really like the the transitions okay so if we go over here we got Midori's ring And then there's one other thing I can do, which is come over here and eat this bird seed. <laughs> I ate the bird seed. So, there's a really interesting hidden system in this game. Uh, let's go into status here. Um, and that is the weight system. Depending on what you eat or how you eat it, your character's weight will change. Now that's interesting. Uh, because it changes the way your stats work. And they never explain this to you. Um, and the less you weigh, the higher your agility is. And agility almost never changes, but that's your that's your active time battle turn-based speed. Um, but if you gain if you get heavier, that goes down by like one whole point, which becomes drastic in difficult fights later on. And this game has some extremely difficult fights, um, but it increases your attack and I think your defense by just a little bit. And it's, it's almost a negligible difference, except for that change in agility. Um, but, like, I had to go on to an FAQ in 1998 to learn about that. Just chickens in the house. Oh, that ring I picked up is that little girl's ring over there. I think I'm going to give it to her later. Just walk into the house and be like, where's your husband? Find the good doctor. Eh! Gave her an egg. So hard for. 
So when we eat that, it'll actually change our weight. The director of this game, I can't remember what his name is, but apparently it's his... It's like a little pet thing of his to put um, kids that never speak into uh, his games. All right, we're going up here for a specific reason. So this guy's house is like... Uh, let's see, is there stuff around here to grab? No, there's not. This guy's house is like twice as big as the rest of the houses down in uh, Lahan Village. And he's got technology, which this is, except for the gears in the very beginning and, you know, the spaceship and the opening cutscene, this is the first time you see technology in the game. So yeah, let's look through this telescope. You can kind of get the lay of the land around the place. Um, and I don't, we won't get to, uh, this is actually the world map and it's just a POV from the top of the world map. And you can't see very far because there's lots of mountains and stuff like that. But uh, we will be getting to the world map uh, later on. Oh, hey, look, if I turn it just right, you can see a uh, town out there in the distance, up there in the top right corner of the screen. But there's Lahan. Here we are on top of this mountain. Um, and you guys will be seeing a fair amount of the uh, world map just because you do a lot, of, uh, a lot of navigation about it later. Oh no, I don't want to go down. I wanted to jump off the roof there. <laughs> Some money hiding in the freaking vent. Uh, let's see, there's two other things I wanted to check out up here. I think. First of all, look, there's the dolly on the ground when I jump on it. It makes a noise. It's very cute. Ah! Chicken. Yeah, and I found some Aquasol. Cool. So let's see. I'm pretty sure we've done everything we need to do. Oh, by the way, there's gear just hanging out on top of this house. Looks all busted up. Uh, let's see. Is there something to grab at these barrels? Ah! Couldn't find the dock. Then there was an explosion. <laughs> There he is. So one of the more interesting characters in this game, Doc Satan. You'll be seeing a lot of him. <laughs> that explosion happens all the time. Please hurry up. It'll get dark before you know it, Doc. It's a box. What's in the box? By the way, all this machinery required, like that's a generator back there required to do this. This, like, music box. And granted, that's a little... That's kind of crazy, but... The disparity bit, uh, bit of technology between, like, the commoners and the elite in this game is insane. And you'll see it later. It's all pretty cool. This game has a lot of really deep religious themes. If you notice, that's actually a type of angel there on the, uh... on the pedestal there. And when I say deep religious themes... you'll see.
deep talk for just finding a music box in somebody's shed. An audio device of some type. Doc is such a fucking nerd. But it's cool. It's totally cool. That whole talk is kind of a foreshadowing of some of the big themes of this entire game. And this game goes over, touches so much popular culture and mythology and religion and technology. And it's really cool. I don't want to call it like a time piece or a, like a period piece where it's like trapped in time because it's not like you know like 80s characters where you see you know they all have like the crazy 80s styles and stuff like that but <laughs> I really just came up here to eat your wife's cooking can I have some please <laughs> yeah, you better feel strange. Pay attention to this text. It's like, at this point, it doesn't make sense. But this shit is so fucking on the nose. Yeah. I'm gonna leave it at that, for people who don't know the... What's going on. So some really, really weird musings from the doc here. He's talking about living an ordinary life as a son of man. Uh-oh. Oh, shit! <laughs> Deadly premonition! Kind of. Also, it's interesting that the... 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 item itself exploded, the, the statue and not the mechanics underneath. But I mean, I guess that was an easier thing to change the sprite of. Yeah, delicious food. That wouldn't have happened if we hadn't grabbed the egg. And there we go, I gained a bit of weight already, which is not necessarily that good. And the birds, excuse me, birds pissed at me. Have you handled such delicate instruments? Fuck you, Doc. I'm a grown ass man. Ew. Or he's just like, whatever. Hmm. 
Hmm. It's almost like he doesn't want to tell us he had some kind of deadly premonition. I know, I'm just being weird. Alright, so before we go any further, we're actually going to cut off this episode there. Thanks, you guys, for checking out the first episode of Xenogears. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you guys here for the next one. Mm -hmm.